a big thank you to team PSG, Dr. Ruttul, Dr. Dharmendra, Dr. Amit, Dr. Shalini for having us today. Uh, me, I mean, what bigger, uh, uh, what good thing speaking your, with your closest friend on the same platform. Uh, I'll be talking with Dr. Shefali and we are going to be having kind of a duologue. So it's not that my presentation is separate and hers is separate. We'll start sharing the slides and we'll present as a duologue from our end. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, uh, I, I echo Ami's words. It's uh, an absolute honor to be here. Thank you, everyone, and uh, including Dr. Rutul, Dr. Shalini, Dr. Dharmendra, everyone. And um, as Ami said, uh, it's an absolute pleasure sharing the stage with her. So if, uh, if, it, if you permit me, shall I share the screen? Okay. Uh, am I visible? Yeah. Perfect. Go ahead, Ami. Go to the slide show. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So um, the topic given to us today, would I in fact thank uh, the, the organizers for giving such a wonderful topic on exercise prescription and gestational diabetes. Uh, Shefali, next slide. Uh, gone are the days, you know, when uh, even when I remember I was pregnant with my son 16 plus years back, they used to tell us that keep exercise, keep working till the last day of pregnancy. But now what I have seen is scenarios have changed. Females who are getting pregnant now, they like to rest more. They like to tap pamper their self more. No harm in doing that. But then there are, uh, you know, you have to keep yourself active. And how do we do that is what we, me and Shefali are going to be discussing today in this next 20, 25 minutes. So word about gestational diabetes, it represents a state of chronic beta cell dysfunction in the uh, face of insulin re uh, resistance. Insulin resistance and insulin levels are different prior to pregnancy in women who develop gestational diabetes and those who do not. And that was, was described by Dr. Ohm too a while back. Changes in insulin sensitivity are similar in both groups during pregnancy. However, in gestational diabetes, women, uh, the insulin secretion does not increase adequately. Next slide. So the, the risk factors have already been enumerated in the previous presentations, but let's let's kind of divide the risk factors into modifiable and non-modifiable. So when we talk about the modifiable one, which are in our hands, you know, we can be taking care of our nutrition diet so that we look at our obesity and overweight section and, you know, exercise more. Sedentary lifestyle can be a risk factor. Hypertension can be a risk factor. Whereas non-modifiable ethnicity, greater maternal age, which we are seeing quite often now, history of gestational diabetes, PCOS, family history of hyperglycemia and pregnancy-induced hypertension would be the non-modifiable risk factors. Next. So taking care of gestational diabetes is not taking care of only the diet or exercise. It comes as a, a combo um, of everything. So diet, exercise, fetal health evaluation, pharmacological treatment and above all maternal education all play an important role what we are going to be focusing is on exercise so strong mamas definitely bring up stronger babies and i'm sure of when the babies grow up they would love to say my mama's strongest mm -hmm. so for that lifestyle management in gdm is an important factor next slide so when we talk about exercise, what is the role of exercise? When we are asking you to keep going, keep on doing it, keep yourself moving, we are helping you because it compensates for defects in the insulin signaling pathway, reduces the inflammatory state, changes the adipokine profile, upregulates the antioxidative capacity. Next. So it definitely helps. And exercise may be a non-invasive therapeutic option for preventing and man managing gestational diabetes that can be readily applied to the antenatal population. Next. I absolutely agree. You know, uh, a woman really spends nine months preparing to fall in love for a lifetime. And uh, this nine months are not easy for her because there are a lot of changes, physiological changes that take place in the body during pregnancy. And uh, that is the reason why we have to be so uh, 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 cautious when you're prescribing an exercise therapy to a pregnant lady. Now, pregnancy hormones will cause relaxation of ligaments which are supporting the joints. Therefore, the stability of the joint uh, lessens 
so any kind of jerky movements uh, high impact movements will uh, cause an added injury to the uh, joints as well plus of course the the baby is growing the female is growing in size and the center of gravity then shifts forward because of this there is a little bit of imbalance especially in jerky movements when uh, the when the lady is in the last trimester so um, a uh, shift in the center of gravity along with the laxity of joints makes her more prone to fall and of course we know what happens when the pregnant lady has a fall uh, similarly uh, pregnancy is an ever uh, increasing demand uh, of the body you know so whether it's micronutrients whether it is water whether it is oxygen whether it is blood supply so when you start exercising you are actually directing the oxygen and the blood supply to your muscles and away from the rest of the body but in pregnancy this demand supply ratio is kind of you know they are fighting with each other and that is where uh, we have to draw a line and we have to de- demarcate as to how much can we uh, uh, sacrifice for an exercise and how much is an essentiality for the pregnancy to grow properly but there are definite uh, benefits of uh, uh, the fetus benefits to the fetus as well as the infant when you start exercising so uh, the fetus is will be um, uh, of a normal weight so the, the lesser chances of uh, having a high birth weight or a macrosomia in a gdm patients there is a lower risk of preterm births as far as the fetus is concerned uh, if you talk about the placenta there is increase in the placental viability and the volume there is increase in the uh, placental growth the vascular function which we are so concerned about in gdm is much better when you have an exercising gestational diabetic patient Uh, the neurodevelopment of the uh, fetus is much better, and it translates into instance having a higher behavioral uh, regulatory ability and orientation as compared to a fetus born to a non-exercising pregnant lady. Similarly, if you talk about the body fat, at the age of five, children who uh, of the mothers who have been exercising throughout the pregnancy have much lesser body fat as compared to the um, the counterparts, and their language. skills the oral uh, intelligence all of this is much better when you are having an exercising mother so um, if you talk about the role of uh, exercise in gdm we know that uh, every kind of diabetic will benefit from exercise that is there is no question about that but there are no current uh, gdm specific di- guidelines which are available for exercises um, but what would they say is we need not exercise uh, any extra precautions as far as an exercise regime is concerned except for uh, hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia which we'll discuss it in the later slides uh, if you talk about uh, uh, exercise regime as to be prescribed for the patient i think uh, obstetrician the diabetologist and the physical therapist should come together to formulate a plan and the plan should be based on the fit principles of exercise fit means frequency intensity time and time so exactly as dr shifali mentioned that we looking at the fit principles when we talk about the guidelines you know how much should be exercise what type or how long there are no particular guidelines which are talking about how are the exercise but there have been recommendations a few uh, recommendations of how you know each part of the fit formula can be used in a patients with gestational diabetes next slide shivali yeah i uh, just a second i just want somehow yeah yeah so yeah. when we talk, go to the next slide please yeah sorry no worries is it sharing so, yeah uh i think we went back so when we talk about the general guidelines i'll just start talking uh, and when we talk about the general guidelines um they say that the previous slide they say that uh, you, you should always start in consultation with your doctor so ideally you should be taking a exercise physiologist which may be difficult in our scenarios but especially women who have not been uh, you know active who have been previously sedentary before the pregnancy especially those females should be consulting their medical practitioner of what type of exercise would suit them uh, during the pregnancy next slide and any exercise regimen which starts we always 
you know, be it a gestational, be it a non-diabetic, anyone, you should always start with a warm-up exercise. So warm-up should be, say, around 5 to 10 minutes with a low to moderate intensity aerobic exercise, which would, um, you know, kind of increase the body temperature and reduce the post-exercise muscle soreness and stiffness. This will also, uh, you know, help the body to gradually adjust to the meat of bioenergetics and biomechanical demands of the working component. Again, as warm-up exercise is important, also post-exercise cool-down is recommended. Hydration is also important around that, that part. So if vigorous exercise is performed, uh, uh, especially you have to put, have a cool-down part to reduce the risk of vasovagal response, which can lead to a syncope. Next slide. Now coming to the first part of it. The frequency. So when prescribing exercise, you know, you have to take into consideration the women's previous physical activity, uh, the cardiorespiratory fitness and the strength. So especially for women who have previously been sedentary, it is especially advisable that they avoid exercise in the first trimester and start in the second trimester, by which time their morning sickness, the nausea, fatigue would have settled down and they can get into an exercise routine. Next slide. Also, female who have been having little physical activity should ideally start with 15 minutes of continuous aerobic exercises, say thrice a week, then gradually increase to 30 minutes, for, say at least four to four, five times a week. What the, there are no, there is no upper limit recommendation for the time spent in aerobic exercise, but the ACOG advises against exercising for more than 45 minutes continually because of the risk of increased fetal temperature. Next slide. So uh, we, we know about the frequency, we know about the timing, but what about the intensity? So the majority of the guidelines, including the ACOG, uh, recommends a moderate intensity aerobic exercises for most of the pregnant ladies. And uh, uh, some patients also do a high intensity short duration interval training. Uh, it's The studies haven't shown any kind of adverse effects, but generally at least I do not advise my patients to do a high intensity uh, uh, exercise as such. But having said that, even a low intensity exercise like yoga and tai chi has shown a, a beneficial effect in both the uh, baby as well as the mother. Uh, there is an elevation of mood, there is improvement of the mood, there is uh, increased balance, the lower back pain comes down, the urinary incontinence comes down. So tai chi and yoga do have a place in uh, exercise schedule of our patients. What we need to do while, uh, when you determine the intensity is first assess the cardiorespiratory fitness of the patient. Now, we have to, as Ami has said, we have to find out if the patient is actually exercising and what intensity exercises was she doing pre-pregnancy pre, uh, and then uh, modify it so that it fits her duration uh, during her duration of pregnancy. But as I said, moderate aerobic exercises like walking, uh, jogging, running, these are the ones which are... Uh, Highly recommended. Um, again, uh, use a heart rate as a guide to uh, see how much intensity exercises you can do. So, uh, in during a non-pregnant state, your heart rate can increase to up to 140, 150, 160, which is acceptable. However, during pregnancy, we ideally should have the heart rate of not more than 120 to 125. So the intensity, the best guide to intensity, especially in the era of Fitbits, is to uh, make sure that your heart rate is not accelerating to a point where you cannot, uh, where it is going beyond the control. The other way is, of course, the Borges modified uh, rate of perceived exertion scale. But we also have to remember that as the lady goes bigger, as the pregnancy increases or uh, the duration increases, the intensity exercises, in intensity of the exercises must come down. So as uh, Abhi has rightly mentioned, start with uh, about uh, 30 minutes of exercise at an intensity of about 12 to 14 on the uh, scale of 6 to 20. And um, uh, if the in intensity as the pregnancy advances should reduce, in in uh, it should reduce. A moderate intensity training is very appropriate for most of the uh, patients, especially the GDM patients. But high intensity resistant training should definitely be avoided because it can increase the chances of urinary incontinence or increase the chances of uh, uh, falls because there's a laxity of the joints. Also, uh, there is a chance of hypo, hypo uh, volumia or a hypotension occurring in the patients or it can also induce valsalva maneuvers which puts both the mother and the baby at risk.
Yeah. Shefali? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, about the time of exercise, we have all. Are you taking up time? Uh, yeah. I can't see the timer, but yeah. Go ahead. Yes, Hello. you are on time. Okay. You are on time. Yes. Can I go ahead, Shafali? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So a variety of exercises ranging from low exerting forces such as, you know, yoga, tai chi, already Shafali has mentioned. These exercises do help. Recreational physical activities encourage and has been shown to improve general well-being and the pregnancy outcomes. Now, the programmed exercise is very important as it helps in, you know, to aid in vital and glucose control for women in gestational diabetes. Exercise guidelines suggest aerobic exercise to some extent resistance strength training also they say a combination of both works really well so you know some amount of aerobic exercise because it increases insulin sensitivity and resistance strength training because increases the muscle mass so overall it both helps in increasing the glucose uptake so both are helpful pelvic floor exercises and hydrotherapy have been recommended initially in the later half because uh, you know the, uh, they help improve the muscle tone the fitness and help in reducing the peripheral edema women who regularly exercise during pregnancy have more positive pregnancy outcomes and fewer negative adverse events next slide so this is what we were talking about the type of exercise the exercise guidelines for pre pregnant ladies they say that you can prescribe aerobic exercise which is any activity which would use uh, the, uh, large muscle groups in a continuous rhythmic manner like walking jogging aerobic dance swimming hydrotherapy exercise aerobics rope climb skipping hiking rowing and to a lesser extent maybe a prescription of resistance strength training next slide resistance strength training can also be given so as a combination of both it really works well Although the major societies have recommended the use of resistance training for pregnant women, they are yet to give us any specific guidelines for practice to be prescribed in our patients who have GDM. Next slide. Now, pelvic floor exercises are also shown to reduce incontinence and bladder weakness, which may be seen after pregnancy. And the ACOG reports hydrotherapy, which is one of the most in thing right now, to be co is considered safe during pregnancy because of the potential to improve the positive outcomes and pregnancy management. It helps to improve the fitness of the patient and reduce the peripheral edema. Next slide. So, Shifali, what do you think? What, ex what would the exercise prescription overview look like? I think what you've said is uh, summed it up beautifully because the FIT program gives you an idea as to how you should proceed uh, with a GDM patient who must exercise, but they, it must be uh, an exercise tailor-made to the patient. So overall, and as you said rightly, a moderate intensity exercise uh, with an uh, involving a large muscle activity in a rhythmic manner like walking or uh, running or st static cycling, I will not put it as cycling, especially on our roads, but at least static cycling would be a good uh, way to uh, tone up the muscles. Similarly, a uh, resistance of a moderate, a low to moderate grade should also help. And as you said, uh, hydrotherapy and uh, Tai Chi and yoga will also benefit our patients. But we must remember that there are some safety tips that we have to caution, uh, we have to use in our patients. So first thing, high impact or high physical contact exercises should be avoided, like uh, water skiing or horse riding. Uh, thankfully, water skiing and uh, skiing is not there so much in India. So, But we should avoid things which can cause a fall. Second, and more importantly in our country, is we should uh, avoid exercising in very hot climates especially humid climates like Bombay and Mumbai. So in these, uh, uh, this kind of climate, there is a definite chance of the patient going into dehydration and this dehydration can lead to hypotension. Now, the growing fetus, as you rightly said, cannot regulate its temperature in the first trimester. And therefore, if the uh, temperature of the uh, patient goes very high, then the fetus is also exposed to a higher temperature. Having said that, you can do the same exercises in a controlled environment like an AC room. Uh, that will definitely benefit both the fetus as well as the mom. Uh, avoid holding your breath, the pranayam, etc., etc., to a long extent. You should avoid that also uh, because it will uh, give extra stress to your pelvic floor. We do not want anything to harm the baby. 
uh, avoid lying on the back, especially in the second and the third trimester, because uh, again, that can lead to a problem. Um, uh, any exercise in which you are standing or sitting in one position for a long time should be avoided. Uh, it may lower the blood pressure, it can cause uh, muscle cramps, and it can lead to a lot of other problems as well. Rapid change in movement, wherever it is involved, should be avoided again because bouncing methods, uh, uh, rapid change in direction, all of this can again accelerate uh, uh, injury to the joints as well as uh, make the person lose the uh, balance and this can result in fall as well. Uh, One-sided exercises like walking, lunges or uh, single step up uh, in the third trimester should be again avoided. Most importantly, I think every woman, I'm sure all of us, all the women who have been pregnant know this, that they, the, the level of intuition is very high during pregnancy. And it's time that the, we ask the patient to listen to their body. If it feels good, do it. If it doesn't feel good, you have to stop no matter what the physical trainer says. Again, most important, do not exert yourself because you may need to slow down as your pregnancy progresses. Uh, have a good team of uh, uh, your doctor, your diabetologist, as well as your uh, uh, obstetrician and your physical trainer to uh, formulate a good plan. As a general rule, if you want to know the intensity of the exercise, one is the heart rate, which should not go beyond 120, 125. And second, you should be able to hold a conversation when you exercise. If you become breathless when you talk or if you cannot utter more than two, three words, that means you're exercising too strenuously and you need to cut it down. If you were not active before you got pregnant, don't take up sudden strenuous exercises for 45 minutes, etc. You can start slow, as um, Dr. Ami has said, and then uh, increase the intensity as well as the duration. Increase it gradually to about three times in a week. If you have time, you can do split sessions like 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the night, which will help again. Remember, exercise does not have to be strenuous to be beneficial. Any kind of uh, uh, exercise, uh, if you have any kind of symptoms like vaginal bleeding, dizziness, headache, or uh, a preterm labor, amniotic fluid leakage, all of these things, definitely you have to stop the exercise uh, immediately. The gynecologist or the obstetrician will probably put you on bed rest any which way. But in order to uh, ensure that you have a good, healthy uh, uh, you know, pregnancy, you should exercise if it is possible. Take advice and then exercise. If you are having any kind of problems, you have to tell the patient that you come back to me, let me know, and then we can work on it together. Uh, of course, if there has to be a, a, a support system as well. The pregnant lady cannot do uh, running and uh, running or jogging alone on a treadmill when uh, in the house when she's all alone, because if she has any complications, there should be somebody else to help her out as well. Drink plenty of water before during and after your workout. This is the most important thing. Signs of dehydration include dizziness, uh, a racing or a pounding heart, or urination of small amounts of concentrated urine. All of these are signs of dehydration, and dehydration will have an adverse effect on both the baby and the child. Wear a sports bra, wear loose clothing, uh, cotton clothing if possible. Uh, use a belly support belt in case uh, of the third trimester so that uh, when you're walking or running, you're comfortable. Avoid becoming overheated. So uh, have, a, have a temperature control room. Exercise with the AC on at a comfortable uh, room temperature. Remember, you don't need to sweat to get the benefits of exercise. What you need to do is you need to listen to your body. As I said, avoid standing still or in any one position for a long time. Avoid lying flat on the back. And um, uh, do not try and, um, you know, overexert yourself uh, at any point. Now, if you come to gestational diabetes, the most important complication that we face when the patient starts uh, exercising is hypoglycemia. So when, when the patient is going to go on an exercise regime, we need to advise the patients about how she'll feel when she gets hypoglycemic. Secondly, we need to control and alter our doses of insulin such that she does not fall into hypoglycemia. Of course, she can do self-monitoring of blood glucose and uh, the physician can be consulted depending upon how it, is, how it goes. Uh, uh, AGP or a CGM is a wonderful tool at our disposal. But if the patient is not willing for that, ask her to uh, take the uh, pre-exercise level blood sugars. And if it is low, then uh, you should have a carbohydrate snack before you even think about exercising is what should be told. 
in case of hypoglycemia treat fast so that the patient does not stay in the uh, stay in a hypoglycemic episode for a longer period of time there is um, uh, if if the patient is recurrently having fluctuations in the blood sugar then maybe you can time the exercise schedule such that uh, she is in the post prandial level when she is going to do an exercise but of course we cannot have a uh, a good uh, intensity exercise after meal so not all patients are advised to exercise there are some contraindications some are absolute contraindications contraindications some are relative ones so what are the absolute ones is restrictive lung disease rupture membranes preeclampsia pregnancy induced hypertension or premature labor placenta previa incomplete cervix or cerclage has been done hemodynamically significant heart disease or high order multiple gestation maybe more than or equal to triplets there are also relative contraindications where the patient ha has to understand that if we, they need to exercise they have to go slow if there is a patient is a heavy smoker or history of extremely sedentary lifestyle orthopedic complications extreme obesity now patient is very underweight poorly controlled type 1 diabetes and this is a whole list there is seizure disorder hyperthyroidism anemia twin pregnancy after 28 weeks so always as dr shefali also mentioned always plan your exercise in consultation with your gynecologist your diabetic physician and if an exercise physiologist available on board next slide so summarizing all pregnant women should engage in physical activity and may benefit from planned and programmed exercise women with gestational diabetes have extra physiological changes when when left attend unattended to have the potential to increase negative pregnancy outcomes for both mother and child when used effectively exercise can be a correct tool for treatment as part of the continuum of care for women with gestational general guidelines encourage these women to engage in moderate intensity aerobic and strength training along with the recreational physical activity exercise program should be tailored by appropriately trained and qualified individuals i would just sum up in one line always advise your patient next line listen to the body do not overdo anything beat exercise or beat rest go in the right way the best way to keep your baby healthy is to keep yourself healthy and happy thank you all for your patient hearing